Welcome to Atari Newsline Newsflash. So today, apparently, uh, marks the 45th anniversary of the Atari VCS. Um, Whenever I was doing my research online, it looks like it was the 11th, but Atari was saying it was today, so whether it was yesterday or today, um, thank you so much, Atari, for all the fun you brought us. Now, this is the uh, 2600 Mini, so, (laughs) or the 2600 Junior, so... um, I would bring my heavy sixer out here, but it's too heavy, so happy birthday, Atari. Happy 45th birthday. Um, uh, I have so much to be thankful for, for this console and this company, Um, so um, I just wanted to make sure to uh, talk about that. Um, So um, I, the 2600 is probably... Um, my top favorite Atari console, just because it has such a huge game library. I have so many wonderful memories with it. Uh, my second real close favorite is the Jaguar back here. They often um, are my top favorites, mainly because I never had a Jaguar as a kid. So it's like every time I play the Jaguar, it's like playing a new console to me. So, um, so anyway, happy birthday, Atari. Um, we really do um, have a lot to be thankful for. So I got some more information um, since my last news line. Um, that's why I'm putting out one so soon because um, I've had a couple of uh, people reach out to me um, who have a little more information about the XP cart situation. Um, one of my friends let me know. Uh, let me just pull it up here. Yes, uh, one of my friends showed me this. Um, so shortly after the XP carts got sent out, um, I guess over a week ago, Atari, um, sent an email out, um, to those who had, uh, non-limited edition carts. So I guess the, um, standard edition carts is the one having the problem. Uh, it says here regarding your XP purchase, and I'll put this on the screen so you can see. Dear customer, we have discovered that some of the Atari XP cartridges shipped last week were not assembled to our quality standards, and as a result, may not operate correctly in your Atari 2600 console. No action is required on your part at this time. We are working on a solution to ensure you have a working cartridge, and you will hear from us soon. And apparently this was sent out about a week ago. Um, I want to say a week ago yesterday, so... um, Maybe on the 6th of September, somewhere around there. I could be wrong. Um, Or the 5th. Um, So apparently Atari has yet to address this um, past that email. Um, So um, we're still waiting on word um, from Atari to see how they are going to address the non-working XP carts. And again, I think it's the standard edition, not the limited edition. Um, I could be wrong. But that's kind of what I'm hearing from people in Discord. So um, anyway, if you have that issue, let me know if you have any more information. As we hear more from Atari on how they are going to address this situation, I will update you. Um, I was telling a few people it might be easier for them just to refund because if you're going to have people send in their carts to get fixed, that's time-consuming and expensive. And also replacing them means they have to have back stock, and I don't think they do or they would be selling more of these. So I think it was limited edition. So um, with, with you know, um, limited quantities. So I'm not sure how they were going to address it. Um, yeah, still uncertain. But it looks like they are. So that's a good sign. Um, it's been over a week now since the email got sent out. So I'm hoping we hear something soon for those uh, poor people. That, that will, though I wouldn't say poor, but those unfortunate people that ordered that, those cartridges. Um, they need to be fixed toward their, their working. So, um, so hopefully Atari will address that soon. So for the 45th anniversary of the Atari 2600, I wanted to read an article that, um, someone, um, in discord suggested, um, and I don't have their name up here or I would definitely let you know. Let me see. If I can, I can't bring it up right now. Sorry, um, but anyway, there was a disc, there was a article um, put out by Ars Technica today, 
called the 103 Classic Games That Did and Didn't Make the Atari 50 Anniversary Cut. And this is talking about the games in the Atari 50th Anniversary Collection, um, the Celebration uh, Collection. And let me go ahead and read this to you here. It's really interesting. It gives kind of an insight into the games that might be on that uh, compilation coming out later this year. So it says here, Retailer leak suggests games from Arcade to Jaguar. Surprises apparently still wait. This came out today from Sam Makovec. Uh, September 12, 2022. Hopefully I didn't butcher his name too badly. Um, so it says here... Um, the box art for Atari 50 includes teases of various console designs and game box art images. Earlier this year, news emerged about yet another Atari Classic gaming compilation meant to celebrate the company's 50th anniversary. As we've seen quite a few Atari branded collections over the years, we wondered exactly what shape Atari 50's selection of over 100 games would take ahead of its launch on Steam, Xbox One, PS4, and Nintendo Switch on November 8th. They forgot PS5. <laughs> Thanks to a European retailer listing that emerged over the weekend, we now have an apparently final list of the Atari 50 selection of games. 103 in all, as spread across arcade cabinets, six console families, and a selection of reimagined, newly coded games and ports. The verdict, it's pretty good. Yet it's still a glaring reminder that the compilation might better be named Atari Corp 50. Missing vowels and details about VCTR SCTR for now. We'll break this article up into platform specific lists, which each include our own notes and, and analysis, and we'll start with the least surprising list. This collection stewards at Digital Eclipse had already announced plans to reimagine six games beyond the original code supplied by Atari's archives, and these alone could be worth the price of admission for 70s and 80s gaming stalwarts. This article notes Digital Eclipse just put out TMNT, the Cowabunga Collection. Two of these, Haunted House and Yars Revenge Reimagined, were announced as straightforward modern graphic versions of their Atari 2600 counterparts. And while we trust Digital Eclipse's track record, we have yet to see exactly how these two games have been rebuilt, or whether they lean on classic pixel designs or new 3D assets. Two additional games sound like souped-up modern remixes of their original counterparts. Quadra Tank, a four-player top a four-player touch-up of the 2600's tank, and Neo Breakout, which combines Breakout and Pong as a two-player versus game. The last two reimagined games in this collection are the most intriguing. VCTR SCTR, or as I call Vector Sector, will combine gameplay from a variety of Vector arcade classics into a newly remixed experience. It's unclear whether this new game will break classics up into mini games or smush them together into a new game experience. But either way, the original Atari RK library was rich with vector driven games to choose from. Additionally, Sword Quest Airworld is a new sequel to the 2600's three part Sword Quest series. Actually, I wanted to add to the article that was a unfinished game, it wasn't a completely new game. Um, I don't think it was ever started, so maybe. Digital Eclipse did create that game, but it was an idea, so it's not brand, brand new. You know, we've known about that one, I think, for a while. Um, anyway, going down, this week's leak does not include any previously unknown games in the above reimagined category. For surprises, we should move on to the compilation selection of arcade cabinet games. And we have uh, Akaara, Asteroids. Asteroids Deluxe, Black Widow, Breakout, Centipede, Cloak and Dagger, Crystal Castles, Fire Truck, Food Fight, Gravatar, iRobot, Liberator, Lunar Lander, Major Havoc, Maze Invaders, Millipede, Missile Command, Pong, Quantum, Space Duel, Sprint 8, Super Breakout, Tempest, and Warlords. Since these lists are alphabetical, this selection's biggest surprise is at the top. Akaara is one of the few rare Atari arcade games to be cancelled and somehow avoid a wider online release or leak in the years that followed. I actually have that game on my Gravatar 
um, Atari Legends cabinet upstairs from RK One Up. So that that is on there, which is awesome. That changed in 2019 thanks to a controversial dumping of a rare cabinet's ROM chips. So this game's inclusion isn't necessarily a world premiere for MAME enthusiasts. Still, Digital Eclipse and Atari Corp. deserve credit for shaking hands and giving fans a legitimate path toward purchasing and enjoying this unreleased game. Atari Corp. had previously done this for the unreleased arcade game Maze Invaders, which launched on Atari Flashback Classics Volume 3 in 2018. The collection's biggest concession is made clear by the date range in the above list. Notice that no cabinets beyond the year 1983 appear. That's no accident. Shortly after the early 1980s video game industry crash, the company's corporate masters at Warner opted to break Atari into parts and sell them. The hardware focus division, Atari Corp., is responsible for this year's anniversary compilation, while Atari Games, Inc., went on to release many incredible Atari-branded arcade games before eventually being acquired by Midway, which, this many years later, is now controlled by Warner Brothers, Discovery. A chance corporate gaming reunion, then. Thus, Atari Corp. and Digital Eclipse apparently have not licensed many notable Atari arcade classics from their current license holders at WBD. That list is quite long, but just counting the year 1984, that leaves out the megaton games Paperboy and Marble Madness, with the legendary likes of Gauntlet and 720 following a few years later. Similarly, anything with a significant Hollywood tie-in, like 1983 Star Wars, also doesn't make the cut. Bounty Bob Strikes Back, twice. Since Warner's 1980s corporate fracturing left the console business and its first party games largely intact, Atari 50's console libraries have less Atari vs. Atari squab squabbling, with a few notable exceptions. Let's group together the company's MOS 6502 derived consoles for the next lists. So it says here, for Atari 800, we have Bounty Bob Strikes Back, Caverns of Mars, Food Fight, and Minor 2049er. For the Atari 2600, we have 3D Tic-Tac-Toe, Adventure, Air Sea Battle, Asteroids, Basic Math, Breakout, Canyon Bomber, Centipede, Combat, Combat 2, Crystal Castles, Dark Chambers, Demons to Diamonds, Dodgem, Fatal Run, Gravatar, Haunted House, Millipede, Minor 2049er, Missile Command, Outlaw, Quadrun, Race 500, Real Sports Series, separate releases for baseball, basketball, boxing, football, soccer, tennis, and volleyball. Saboteur, Secret Quest, Solaris, Super Breakout, Surround. Sword Quest Series, separate releases for Earthworld, Fireworld, and Waterworld. Warlords, and Yars Revenge. For the Atari 5200, we have Bounty Bob Strikes Back, Millipede, Missile Command, Star Raiders, and Super Breakout. For the Atari 7800, we have Asteroids, Basket Brawl, Centipede, Dark Chambers, Fatal Run, Ninja Golf, and Scrapyard Dog. The closest we get to unreleased, fair on these lists, comes from a pair of games that never saw launch on their target platforms. Saboteur for the 2600 and the Millipede port for the 5200. Both of these received a retail launch in the 2018 compilation Atari Flashback Classics Volume 3, as did many of the other games in the 2600 and 5200 lists. If you're a 5200 purist for any reason, the full Atari Flashback Classics collection on Switch has more games from that console. Where Atari 50 goes a bit further is its inclusion of games for the very early Atari 800 computer system, along with the company's last gasp, Atari 7800 hardware. The same, sadly, doesn't apply to any of Atari's releases for the ST computer, which is arguably, arguably due to its largely licensed library, including apparently unavailable games from Atari Games Inc., and reliance on keyboard and mouse availability. And we're waiting to see what the retail listings mention of an enhanced version of Star Raiders will look like. This title wasn't mentioned in the reimagined selection of games, so we don't expect a full recoding, and we're not necessarily expecting a port of the game's 2011 remake. Remember when the title Rampart was a Reddit meme? We round out the list with games from both the impressive For Its Time links and the not quite 64 bit Jaguar. The former's library on Atari 50 is scant due to its part to its history as a collaboration between Atari and the combined engineering and game design team at Epix. 
Though Epix began the development of Lynx as a portable gaming system, Atari picked up the system's rights in a deal that was supposed to keep Epix afloat. That didn't pan out, which means that the rights to Epix Lynx game output, which included Chips Challenge and California Games, were eventually acquired by the holding company Bridgestone Media Group. Lest you forget, the creator of Chips Challenge eventually negotiated the retail release of its sequel with BMG, which is its own fascinating tale. Between those titles and, once again, Atari licenses, currently owned by WBD, that leaves out some biggies. Cough Cough, Rampart. In a tweet that seemingly acknowledged the retail leak's legitimacy, Digital Eclipse president Mike Micah confirmed that the Atari 50 compilation will not include support for Lynx's two-player Link Play modes, despite the devs' efforts to support such functionality. And here we have games here. For the Atari Lynx, they have Basketball... Sorry. And on the Atari Lynx, we have Basket Brawl, Malibu Bikini Volleyball, Scrapyard Dog, Super Asteroids and Missile Command, Turbo Sub, and Warbirds. For the Atari Jaguar, we have Atari Karts, Club Drive, Cybermorph, Evolution Dino Dudes, Fight for Life, Missile Command 3D, Ruiner Pinball, Tempest 2000, and Trevor McFur and the Crescent Galaxy. The Jaguar side of things honestly isn't so bad, considering only 50 games launched for the system in North America. The above list is nearly 20% of that whole library. The biggest omission on a popularity basis is the technologically impressive, for the time, Alien vs. Predator, and we can only assume other games' as reliance on third-party IP precluded their Atari 50 inclusion. And well, this Jaguar list has some absolute stinkers. Get ready to see just why Jaguar tanked at retail after getting frustrated by its pack-in shooter Cybermorph, for starters. Yet Tempest 2000's appearance is a good reminder that its legendary creator, Jeff Mentor, and Atari Corp previously shook hands on the series, which is great news for this compilation. Rounding out the selection of games is an odd choice. An emulated version of Touch Me, a self-contained handheld toy, but is basically Simon in a different shape. Its name is also uh, less comfortable to say out loud than Milton Bradley's much more popular product. And while the leak spells out what games players can expect for a purchase price of $40 in all current console families, it doesn't spoil the treasure trove of interviews, scan documents, and other historical errata that Digital Eclipse teased as part of this compilation. We should also expect Easter eggs as well, Micah tells Ars Technica, based on how comprehensive the studio's last retro-minded release, Cowabunga Collection, turned out to be. We're optimistic that Atari 50 will flesh out the company's highs and lows in a compelling fashion. Well, at least the company's ancient lows. We're not expecting this gaming collection to offer much scrutiny about the company that Atari Corp has since become. So that was by Sam Makovec. Uh, with Ars Technica. Um, I do take issue with their description of the Atari Jaguar. Um, uh, you know, we see this a lot with, um, uh, with people that have never touched a Jaguar. Um, they're biased, of course. Uh, they're probably in 64 fans, but whatever the reason, <laughs> um, yeah, I, f I find a lot of the hate really, um, is not warranted. Um, there are some fantastic games on the Jaguar. Um, he mentioned a few of them. I actually like Cybermorph. Um, yes, there are some stinkers, but um, I think overall the Jaguar has got some great games. So anyway, that's just me, and it might be you too. Anyway, so that's it this time, guys. I know it's been a long news line, uh, news flash, but I wanted to get the article out there and explain a little bit about what Atari um, um, has said about the XP cart issues. Let me know down below um, if you've heard back from Atari on what they plan on doing. If not, I'll probably report on that soon whenever I hear something um, So in Discord. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, happy 45th birthday, Atari 2600. Where will we be without you? Um, I don't know. Um, and just to round out this um, news line, I wanted to let you know I actually got something in the mail recently. Now, don't hate me. Um, because I went on and on about why someone would buy something so silly. And look you here. It's the, it's the Atari 2600 Lego set. <laughs> so I'm so excited to get that. Um, 
I got it about a week ago. I haven't touched it, but I might actually do, um, I might actually, uh, video me putting it together. I'm not sure. Like a live stream. Who knows? Let me know down below if you're interested in that. Um, I'm excited. I got it. Um, I, I got a little discount on it. Um, cause I have a friend that works for Lego, but, uh, yeah, let me know down below what you think. Uh, happy 45th birthday, Atari 2600. We owe you so much. Have a great day. Bye.